Hey, and welcome to Miss Panther's show. Roll with the Panthers if you love what you do, y'all. And on today's show, we're going to the bakery, Z Paws Bakery, down here in H Town. Uh, the owner, Liz, is an off the chain designer. So we have uh, some pictures, about a good 15, 20 pictures, and she has great designs. I mean, the cake is just, mmm. She has little candy pops, push ups, uh, just you name it, she got it. So we're going to check her out and her bakery. And then, of course, the panther is going to go to the jungle, y'all. You remember the predator? Well, panthers is prancing around like the predator up in the jungle. Going to show you some pictures of the panthers and a little history on the panthers because, you know, that's where the panthers is from. So we're going to take it there and go to panther land, to the den, y'all. And then, of course, our special guest in the house is Miss Peggy Scott Adams. Now, I know y'all remember the song Bill where they were at the party and she went outside looking for Bill and he was hung, hugged up in another man's arm. So we're going to let her tell that story because she's online chatting with the Panthers. And, of course, we're going to hear a little bit of that jam, y'all, that single that hit national charts. All right, then, let's roll it with the Panthers and let's start it off in the bakery, y'all. We have some yummy, 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 yummy cakes. Hey, I'm Liz from Zupod Cakery. We are a custom cake shop that creates memories. Creating cakes that create memories. <laughs> we make custom cakes. All the work we've done on the truck is ours. We do everything that's in your brain. If you can imagine it, we can do it. If you can't imagine it, we can still do it. No matter what you want, we got it. Thank you. 
duct tape. Pushies. And that's about all we got. Thank you so much, guys. Y'all have a good day. Bye. Mmm. OMG, OMG in that bakery. I tell you, OMG, Liz, you got it going on. Okay, let's go to the jungle. Let's take it to the jungle with the Panthers, y'all. Take it to the jungle. <laughs> Most be paralyzed so you won't get caught. So beautiful. See how he has spots? By the way, this panther, well, the word black panther is used for any type of big cat with a big black coat. So this could be a cougar, leopard, puma, jaguar, or who knows, but it's sweet, y'all. Black panthers is mostly a solitary animal. They are rarely seen together. They mostly hunt and live by themselves. Wow, I wonder how much this one weighs. Well, who cares? We're just chilling right now. Yeah. Now that looks sweet and laid back. Just simply beautiful. Well, of course, they look sweet and laid back, but don't make that sweetness your weakness because panthers, I mean, <laughs> I mean, the panthers are not to be played with, y'all. Not to be played with. Wow, look at those front paws. You know, they use those paws to kill their small prey. Slap, and you out. Their paws are so silent because they retract their claws while they're walking and running. So you never even hear them coming. Don't get caught. Now even though you see this beautiful panthers chilling out in the sun, they are rarely seen. They blend in with their surroundings and just gorgeous. Wow, panthers just love those. Oops, wrong cats. But they are pretty awesome. Look at that. Just beautiful. Oh my God, panthers. That's my pet. What you doing with my glasses and drank glass? No more TV for you, Panthers. No more TV for you. Now, this one is in steel mode. Now, this cat is in steel mode because he looks like he has his eye on something, y'all. Panthers mostly hunt at night, so I guess during the day, they relax and chill like we do, huh? Oh, heck, that's not my peeps. Sound like the lions and elephants coming after me. Oh, heck, somebody help me. Help me, y'all. Panthers got to get on up out of here, y'all. Rolling, Panthers rolling. Come on, let's hit it. Ah, watch it, watch it. Oh, heck. Okay, we're going from the jungle to the phone line. And now we're going to talk to Miss Peggy Scott Adams, and she's going to tell us all about her history and if she really wrote the song because Bill is a true story or not. So let's check it out and see what's going on. Take it to the house. Okay, welcome to today's show on Roll with the Panthers. If you love what you do, y'all. And today, of course, we have someone that love what they do, a very special guest, Miss Peggy Scott Adams on the phone, chatting with the Panthers. And we're going to tell you a little bit about what's going on with Miss Scott. Is it Miss Scott or you prefer Miss Adams? Whatever. Well, how are you doing today? <laughs> I am wonderful. I am wonderful and it's good to be with you. And it's good to have you on the show. And um, 
the first thing that I want to ask, that song, Bill, is that a true story? Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the million dollar question. That's right. <laughs> well, no, it's not a true story for me. However, uh, uh, you know, as I've traveled across the country when the Bill first, uh, we released the Bill back in 1997, I realized how many people, you know, uh, story I was telling, which was a little bit shocking to me, but as for myself, everything at my house during that particular time was okay. Okay. You know, but the problem is we never know what tomorrow's going to bring, but, <laughs> what? Uh, no, I sang someone else's story. It was not a story for me, sweetheart. <laughs> That's probably what everybody asked you because when I first heard the song years and years ago, uh, I didn't know who sung it. You know, I just heard it and I was like, wow, let me hear that again, you know. And the story is so realistic, you know, that's why I had to ask the question. I'm sure everybody asked you that question. They do, and, and I was as shocked as you when uh, my producer at the time, the late Timmy Jimmy Lewis, who wrote the song, when he presented it to me, you uh -huh. know, I thought that it was going to be your typical he dumped me for her. Uh -huh. And when I got to the line that says, the man I loved, loved another guy, I mean, I literally <laughs> called him, what? <laughs> I said, I'm not singing this. <laughs> no way I'm singing this. But after some consideration, and, and uh, I said, okay, I'll, I'll go ahead on it, and I'll do it, because uh, no one's going to play it anyway. No one will hear it, and mm -hmm. boy, mm -hmm. how wrong I was. But, you know, Ms. Catherine, once you get past, for me, once you get past, you know, breathing hard and French kissing and the shock of the song, mm -hmm. uh, for me, I realized that in the end, the song is really... You know, it has a homosexual theme, but it's really about deception, being deceived, you mm -hmm, know? Right. Now, have, if you ask me, have I uh, experienced deception? Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> we all have, you know, at one time or another, things right. turn out to be what we thought they were or uh, what we expected them to be. So I relate to the song from that point of view. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, it, it's a very, very good story. You know, as you wait and hear, you know, the surprises that come along, you know, <laughs> to the end. It's a very good story. And um, it hit national charts. So it went viral. You know, it's all over the Internet. Bill, Bill, oh, yeah. Bill, you know. Yeah, we were number one for almost, almost four, a little better than four months on the Billboard charts, blues charts. They supposed to be charted on the pop charts, charts as well in uh, 1997. And it was just a... Bill just caused a real phenomenon across this country. I right. The Oprah show, every talk show, every uh, print media was talking about Bill, so it kind of resurrected my career. Right, right. And uh, I see now you're doing gospel, or you have a couple of gospel uh, albums out right now? Yes, we are. What what it is, Ms. Mather, is, is that after uh, the late Jimmy Lewis, like I said earlier, who was my producer and my and my, my dear friend, mm -hmm. who I miss so much, after he made the transition, and you know, and uh, a few weeks later, uh, my brother, who was my road manager and my best friend, and he passed, and uh, seven days later, it was my husband. Mm -hmm. So 2005 was a very traumatic year for me, time right. for me, mm -hmm. and... Uh, I had to just kind of, you know, search myself and decide, make some tough decisions as to which way I wanted to go with my life. I was married to a mortician politician, and, you know, I had to make a decision for his business if I wanted to maintain the funeral home and which way I wanted to go. And during this time of just really researching myself and giving myself some time to uh, revamp uh, more or less, I had this divine this divine uh, uh, experience where the Spirit of God told me to start my own because there were so many record companies that were calling me to find out if I was interested in recording after Jimmy passed. And like I said, I was just in a, in a zone where I was trying to decide what I wanted to do, and it was during this time right. that I got this uh, spiritual uh, intervention, more or less, to start my own record label. And right. this is what I did. I started my own record label, Nora Records, which is named after my, my dear mother. And um, so we decided to do, I came from a gospel background, sweetheart. My mom was a gospel 
motorist in Sacola, Florida. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it wasn't like I sit down and say, well, I want to do this gospel directed. It was, uh, like I said, it was spiritually orchestrated. And uh, right. so, uh, being obedient to what I felt like I knew, you know, it was uh, confirmed that I, I had to do it. So we stuffed the uh, gospel city back to the roots that we did, which is just uh, one of the uh, a powerful projects that I did, so anointed. Uh, because, it, like I said, it was spiritually orchestrated, you know? So right. That's how that came about. So, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm so proud of that project. Yeah, um, and I see uh, all over the internet, of course, it, it has a paragraph that says, the little lady with the big voice. <laughs> well, that's funny when I, uh, the staff is when I was in high school, because I was singing in clubs when I was like 15 years old, uh -huh. you know, and uh, one of the DJs in Pensacola, Florida, he gave me that title, the little lady, because I was only 5'2", and weighed maybe 90 pounds at that time. <laughs> uh, the time is going about to change, don't weigh 90 anymore. But, <laughs> but anyway, that's how we uh, came about that title, the little lady with the big voice, a job here in Pensacola, uh, uh, kind of gave me that title. And you, knew, and you do have a big voice. You know, I was listening to uh, the duet you did with uh, JoJo Benson, uh, Lover's Holiday. Yes. And, yes. yeah, and when you came in, it was just so powerful, you know. So, you know, I, I understand where the big voice come in, you know. Yes. Well, that was one of the things when I would do interviews back in the 60s. I was with JoJo, and stuff. I mean, everybody was just uh, uh, pleasantly surprised to see this little lady, you know. <laughs> with this big voice, and that was the first thing most of the interviewers would ask me, how much do you weigh? <laughs> you know? But that's a gift, that's a gift of God. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, you really have a nice, strong voice. You mean business. You when, so you, when you sing it, you mean business. I was like, whoa. <laughs> Well, you know, one thing, Miss Matthew, is that Jenny, uh, in the latter years, uh, when it came out with the Help Yourself CD, we released the Help Yourself CD, Jenny was such a pro uh, prolific writer, and he wrote about reality, uh -huh. you know, uh, and I think that's why we were so successful, like I said, although Bill was not a personal story for me, but he, he dealt the reality, and it was a story about so many other people, and, right. and, and subsequently, all the other songs, you know, uh, was like that, and when I, when, when you're singing about real things, although it may not be personal, uh -huh. you know, then that's where the emotion people ask me, well, how can you sing a song like that if you have not gone that experience? But uh, when, uh, as I said, you know, reality, when you're singing about reality, mm -hmm. it's easy for me to put the emotions there because, you know, uh, it's my, not my experience, but it's somebody's experience. So oh, yeah. Where you get the, you know, and if I can't feel it, I'm not going to sing it because I firmly believe that if I don't feel it, there's no way you can feel it. You know? Right, right. And, and you brought it there. I mean... Uh, that's why I thought it was a true story. I mean, you took it there. The story was good, and you sung it. Yeah, you know, you did that. So, well, like I, I said, I'm to convince a lot of people that it was not. A thing. I had uh, <laughs> to give you a quick story. I was in Louisiana, and I had shared this with the audience that you know it wasn't a personal story for me. Uh -huh. uh, and at the end of the show, I was in my dressing room, and I overheard these guys out in the hallway talking, and they said, "Dad, I don't care what she said." No way you can say that song like that. Something didn't happen. So, but you still could convince some people that it was not a personal. Oh, well, they'll, they'll get over it now, huh? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and I see where you've been uh, on Oprah, CNN, and all over the place uh, rolling. Yeah, yeah, we, you know, we, I've had uh, been in this business for uh, sweetheart for a little better than 40 plus years, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I've been Exactly. I, I don't regret one minute of it, you know, I'm just uh, I'm one of those artists, you know, the thing is that where the music business came and found me, I didn't go looking for it, although uh -huh. I knew that, you know, that I had to start giving out but my aspirations and dreams as a, as a teenager was to be a school teacher, you know, and right. like I said, uh, the music business came and found me, and um, I uh, had a great career, I've been truly, truly blessed, uh, mm -hmm. Know, there's been some downtime, but most of the time, downtime was because of my own 
And I, I want to say that um, some of the pictures that I've seen of you um, is really, you have a very friendly personality about you. You know, just looking at the pictures, you know, you remind me of uh, Patty LaBelle when I see all the um, nice outfits and your personality. For some reason, it just takes me back to Patty LaBelle. Y'all have that same something about you, you know, and, and, it just remind me of that song. I got a new attitude because I seen you posing with, you know, uh, um, uh, I think it's like a big scar for something you had around your waist, and, and it just had that look like, hey, I got a new attitude type thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that uh, uh, the fabulous, that's generated uh, from a genuine love of people, and to mention uh, Patty, which I happen to be a big fan of. Uh -huh. I Right. And so, you know, which brings me in, in, in touch with so many people across this country and across the world. And uh, because of the fact that I genuinely love people, then what you see is what really is the real deal. Is what you right. Got. And, and you, know, you can and, tell. You can tell yeah. that well, without even... So yeah, you can and, tell that without even knowing. You can just see... You're just one of the type of people where, you know, you just see a picture... And you say, wow, you know, she's a good spirit person. She's friendly and she loves what she do. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, and, I, and I'm a devout believer. I'm a Christian and stuff. And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the Bible says in order to, you know, to have friends, you must first show yourself to be friendly. And like I said, I don't have to, uh, I don't have to pretend. I don't have to force it right. from a natural place of right. having the love of people and caring right. about people. Exactly. Like, what you send out most what you will receive, you know? Right. And that's the way I am. I'm I'm real friendly with everybody. You know, I'm just uh day to day living life, having fun and my motto on the show is I love what I do. So we support everybody that love what they do. <laughs> Peggy Scott Adams. I uh, really love that you uh, took the time to roll with the Panthers today to be on the show. And we know you love what you do. And um, you have anything to say to the audience before we roll out? Well, Ms. Panthers, it's been a pleasure to be with you. And I just want to publicly uh, say thank you uh, and all of the, the, the people on the radio, radio, radio personalities that have supported me over the years. And you know, I had thought that I would go and, and sit out for a while and retire, you know. <laughs> but my man says no, so since he said no, and I decided that I would, uh, I'm back with a new project called Life After Meal. Uh -huh. And uh, with a new single being, uh, if I'm not good enough married and I don't want to be your girl. You right, know? right, 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 right. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. All right. We're well, good talking to you, and uh, we'll chat with you on another note, and we'll be rolling with you on the internet and all over the nation, because I'm sure all we have to do is type in the first few letters, and Peggy Scott Adams going to pop up all over the place, y'all. something
I'm feeling that song. I'm really feeling that. So just say that they wasn't outside and they were in the room somewhere and you knocking. Here it goes. You just knocking. Open the door, Bill. Open the door, Bill. Bill, open the door. Open the door, Bill. And that's when the kicking action come in. Shall we hear the kicking sounds? Bam! You bust in. Bam! You in the door. Bam! OMG. You would expect, like she said, Mary Jane and whoever, but Bill with your husband. <laughs> OMG, OMG. That's all I'm going to say, y'all. Peace out. Let's roll out. So let's do some reenactment and go to the door and look for Bill. And let's see if we can bring him out the house. You know, when they're sneaking around doing some things. So let's go and reenact some stuff. You know, we just got to do something silly. Because that's how the Panthers roll. He got to be hood. He to make this move. Hey, Okay, we hope y'all enjoyed the show on Roll with the Panthers today because you know the Panthers rolls. So, we up out of here, y'all. So, we'll see y'all next week as we roll with the Panthers. And ain't no telling where the Panthers gonna roll, y'all. So, you have to tune in to see what's up. Or check us out online at www.ilovewhatidotv.com.